everyone. This is George Coase with another episode of Mindset Monday. Hey, I haven't done one of these in a while, so uh, I've actually been on the road just traveling around. Uh, it is August 19th when I am recording this, and I am excited to be able to just share a couple of things. I, I, I try to, uh, on my days off, catch up on some stuff, and uh, I really kind of want to do these podcasts. I'm actually recording one uh, later today with a gentleman named CJ Rogers, and just uh, speaking and traveling um, over the last month, it is something that I absolutely love doing. Uh, I feel such an enthusiasm. Uh, I will be honest, uh, something I've heard people say to me when I speak is that uh, I have a gift. And like, I'm not saying I have a gift when I'm podcasting, I'm trying to get better at this. Uh, but when I speak, there's something, I, you know, I feel something I'm just really meant to do. And when I hear that, I feel very validated. And to be able to do something that you absolutely love is, is a gift uh, to me. I, I love doing it. But I will tell you, I hate traveling. I hate traveling so much. I hate getting on planes. Uh, as I'm getting older, turbulence is like affecting me way more. I'm freaking out a little bit more, kind of holding on to seats and stuff like that. Uh, so there's some really awesome parts to what I do, but there's some parts that people don't actually see and that are not, you know, uh, very fun. The late nights getting into places, uh, being exhausted and things like that. And it's not that I, I'm wanting any sympathy or anything like that. With every single job, every, you know, part of our lives, every really good thing that we have in our lives, this can be parenting, you know, this could be even having friends, something like this. There's things that um, we have that are, you know, kind of inconveniences, but we do that uh, because we get to, for the majority of our time, do something that we truly love. And I think there is this, and I think this is kind of what I, why I want to talk about this on the podcast, on this idea of Mindset Monday. A lot of times people see um, uh, the things that we, we get to do that we love and they want to be there or they want to try that or they want to do that. I've had so many people reach out to me and say like, I'd like to be a speaker and, you know, and I think a lot of times the advice I give them is like, hey, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And I've really been thinking about that. I try to give them a pathway of things to do. But what I don't do sometimes is kind of remind them of some things that they might be giving up. And I have, there's this quote, it is like, there's no one really it's attributed to, but it's been shared and it's been, there's variances of it over years. And it says it takes years and years of hard work to become an overnight success. And I totally agree that like a lot of times people, we see where someone's at and we don't see the journey that got them to that point. And we can have envy and things like that, but do we, are we envious of the work they put into it? right? Like, are we jealous about where they got to? Or are we also because then we should also be jealous that they have the willingness to put in extra work to do things. But also, I think, um, if you take that same quote, it takes years and years of hard work to become a night success. There's also another quote, very similar that, you know, I to, you know, that can actually be this, almost the same and, you know, lead to the same outcome is that it takes years and years of sacrifice to become an overnight success. It's sometimes not only the things that we're willing to do, it's the things that we are willing to kind of give up in some ways too. And we, you got to kind of look at that and, and ask yourself, are you willing to sacrifice some things in your life? And so let, let's just take this on a, a personal level. Uh, I had been working out for a long, long time and I was not seeing the results that I wanted um, to see. I was really frustrated because I'm like, look, I, like, and I'm not talking about like 30 minutes and like, walk. I'm like talking like hours a day. I was working out, tr pushing myself to a point where I could not actually find any success. Like it was really, really overwhelming, but I still wasn't finding any growth. I wasn't finding any success in my goals of what I was doing. It was not until I actually corrected my eating habits that I, you know, really kind of started to seeing results. And since then I started really realizing, you know, a lot of people say, you know, like abs are made in the kitchen, you know, it's 90% diet, stuff like that. And I used to like, oh, you know, that's ridiculous, but it is, it is actually kind of true. So that's was kind of the frustrating part. So I had to like, start asking myself like, Hey, like, what am I willing not to, to have in my diet anymore? And it's not that you have to sacrifice things all the time, but I think 
you know, I, I always kind of had this idea of like, oh, like eating, you know, is part of life. And it's just, you know, part of my Greek culture of growing up, you know, in a restaurant and stuff like that. I don't want to give up like certain foods and things like that. But I, I think I went overboard, right? And I don't think you have to give up certain foods, but I think you, for me anyways, I had to give up where I was eating unhealthy as a, a a normal thing like that was just my norm and eating so i would like eat unhealthy like eight meals out of ten and then try to correct it by eating two salads right and so i had to start asking myself like what am i willing to give up on a consistent basis and again like all of these things i think there's nothing you have to give up you know majority wise like i still eat pizza every now and then i still have chips right and I find that when I start kind of slipping, it has nothing to do with my exercise. It's it's my eating. And then I start feeling like in a totally different way. I start feeling really like sluggish and things like that. And a lot of people will say, um, you know, but I don't want to give those things up. And that's great. If, that, if you don't want to give those things up, then that's on you, right? And that's on you. But if you're not willing to give those things up, we also can't really be frustrated when we don't see results in some of the things that we actually do. And again, I'm not saying you have to give up things entirely, but I, like I said, I was, I was feeling so gross on the normal that when I started feeling healthy, I was like, oh, what I was feeling before was not, that was not normal. That was me, that, I was so normalized to it that it, it didn't make sense to me. And so once I started eating healthier, I started getting more energy, started feeling a lot better about, um, and, and to be honest, you a lot more confidence. And I, I noticed that it helped me sleep. It helped all those other things. And it wasn't the hard work that led to it. It was also when I started asking myself, well, like, what am I willing to give up in the pursuit of, you know, becoming more healthy, getting to a place where I want to be health and fitness wise. And I also think about this on the professional level. And I remember distinctly one night the, that I was, um, uh, I was trying to get to an event in Indiana and it was like, this is earlier in my career when I was speaking and I've got to do some really great events, but I think a lot of people see sometimes the great events I get to do, but they didn't see some of the things that, that I did before that, you know, I was willing to, um, to travel and get to places that, um, you know, maybe weren't really excited about having me there, didn't know anything about me or anything like that. And a lot of long nights driving, things like that, missed flights, things like this. And I remember that um, someone messaged me or someone messaged me and said, hey, like we need to like more people should get these national keynotes and things like this. I'm like, I've spoken one national keynote my entire life. And like there, there's something you have to kind of get to that place, right? And I think people get really frustrated with this. What they didn't actually necessarily see is me giving up like literally um, time with my family and uh, time with my friends. What they also didn't see was, you know, nights I spent blogging, writing, creating content, sharing stuff like this too. And it was a lot of things that I was doing, but it was also a lot of things I had to choose not to do at that time to kind of get to a point where I started working my way up, where I started building myself up to get more opportunities, to get, you know, bigger events, you know, uh, larger venues, things like that too. And so I was really frustrated because I, I was getting this message. Basically, I saw it about 2, 3 a.m. And I still had another two hours to drive to get to an event that I had to speak at like 8.30 the next morning. So I knew I was going to get very little sleep, things like that too. But I, I loved doing what I was doing and I was kind of willing to sacrifice. Now, I think there's a point where you sacrifice things where it can become unhealthy. And I understand that too. But I think when we want to look at our goals, we have to start asking ourselves like, hey, we want to get to the space. What are the things that we're willing to not have as much? And sometimes the things that we're willing not to have, like, you know, we like as much time as we want with our friends. And maybe it changes at certain points of your life. Like right now, I think I was willing to kind of give up some things, you know, my personal life at a point in my career where I was fine with that. But now I'm not as much because I've kind of got to a place where I can, you know, I've kind of built up my work and people know me and things like this too, but people don't see, they might only see this part of the journey, but they didn't see the other part of the journey where I gave up a lot of things to that part. So I think when you're trying to achieve something and, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to feel like no sympathy for me and anything that I've ever given up, 
it's just really trying to help people kind of have a self-reflection that, hey, I want to get to this point. Here's the thing that I want to do. Here are the things that I will have to do, the things I will have to work on to get to that point. We have to ask that. But you have to also ask, like, hey, if you choose A, sometimes you got to get rid of B. And maybe you can't do B as much as what you used to do, right? And it's something that I think about, too, when I'm talking about, um, you know, when we're talking about education. What, if you're listening to this right now, right, if you're listening to this is one of the things I've been asking people is like to really think about the basics in education, right? Like, what are the basics? So like, here's an example. So in 2020, you know, a lot of people are still fighting like, hey, we need cursive. And then those same people couldn't figure out how to use Zoom. And so I'm not saying Zoom is a basic, but what is a basic, right? Because basics evolve. Like what's the minimum expectations that we have of things that we need to learn. And so those things evolve over time and we have to ask these questions, but there's a reason I'm bringing this up is that when you look at education, what, whenever you taught or whenever you went to school, everyone listening to this could be a totally different decade, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, zeros, whatever, okay? Here's the thing, the, the length of school day is pretty much the same, no matter the decade, right? The thing is this, the demands on educators keeps going up over and over and over again. So we actually say, hey, in the same amount of time, we expect you to do more and more and more each year. So part of it is that we start to have to ask the question, what are we willing to not do anymore? What are we willing to sacrifice? And this is where, you know, I've got in kind of trouble with this too. Like um, I, I, I remember I was on a talk show they asked me and they painted me as the anti-cursive guy, which I'm not the anti-cursive guy. But my question was, do we need to teach cursive the same amount now that we did when I was in school? And I, I have a big belief that people need to learn how to read cursive because, you know, a lot of historical documents, things like this. But do we need to write it the same way that we used to? I, I don't I don't necessarily think so. And I'm not saying you shouldn't learn it. But if you learn that and you spend time doing that you're also not spending time on other things. So it's not about, it's not a cursive podcast. And you know, some people will get caught up in that and whatever. It's just an example. And the question is, if we're doing one thing, we have to ask, what are we giving up? Because basically what we try to do is we try to say, no, you must teach cursive and podcasting and how to use zoom and this and this. And then all of a sudden what happens is you don't get good at anything because you're trying to do everything. So the reason I ask people to talk about the basics and things like that is because we have to start asking questions like, what does that mean today? And what does that look like? And what are we actually have to give up? Like, what are the things that we have to give up? Because a lot of times we just say, you must do everything you used to do plus, and that doesn't work. You have to figure those things out. And so I, again, when you're talking about this, whether it's on a personal professional level, there is this element of things that we're willing to do, things that we are willing to do, but that also means there has to be things that we're going to be comfortable sacrificing. And you might not like some of my answers. You may not like say, well, I don't want to give up this time with this. And, you know, like I said, it evolves. There is a time in my life where, you know, I didn't necessarily make as many personal connections because I wanted to really focus on my work. But now I'm, I'm also at a place where I can build on my personal connections because I don't necessarily have to focus on my work as much as I used to because I've built up to a certain space, right? And it's like, what are you willing to sacrifice at certain parts of your life? So if you get frustrated that you're not at a place where you want to be, ask yourself, what are the things you're doing to get there? And what are you willing to give up? And if you're not willing to give up and you're offended by this or you're bothered by what I'm saying, then maybe there's a reason that you're struggling to get to that point. And so I just want to do like a little self-reflection because I think a lot of times I struggle with this as well, is that especially like when I was talking about the eating at a point, I didn't want to give up eating the way I was eating. And I was constantly frustrated with the lack of results, but it was until I said, no, I, I can't do this the way I'm doing it anymore. I have to give up some of these things. That's when I finally started seeing results. And I started thinking about that and how that's kind of pertained to other aspects of my life. So just some things I was kind of babbling about. Hopefully something made sense out of here, but I appreciate you listening. Uh, I appreciate you allowing me to be vulnerable, sharing some of these stories, you know, kind of like what has helped me in my work. But um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for taking time to listen. And I appreciate you being here for another episode of Mindset Monday. All right. Have a wonderful day. Take care.